Hi, it's Brian Newman with the Spotlight of Business Owner Show. And today we're thrilled to have David Lastinger. Hi, David. How are you? Hey, I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, so uh, yeah, he's a, a finance guy and he does mortgages. So I want to, before we get started, I want to uh, find out about his background. Dave, so can you elaborate about your background and then how you got into this? Oh, yeah, totally. So if you were to look at my resume, it's extremely eclectic. I've done a lot of things. Um, I started working when I was 14 years old, uh, grew up in the hotel and restaurant business. Um, that's actually where I have my degree is in hotel and restaurant management. I did that for probably about 20 years. Um, I got out of it, went to work for the post office for a little while, and that was pretty fun. Um, worked in their call center, you hear some crazy calls and crazy questions about the mail. And so that was, that was a lot of fun. That was my first experience in a call center. Um, from there, I owned my own business. I was a, uh, a business owner. I owned a company called On The Spot Detailing. Um, I did that for about 10 years just before 2008 happened. And then when 2008 happened, you know, it all, that was a big deal for a lot of folks. I actually went to work for USAA as a home equity and a mortgage specialist. And I was there for about five years. And then I went to a, a, credit, a local credit union, did them for about five years. So I've done a lot of things. I've been in the biz for, for a bit, um, seen a bunch of things. And one of the nice things about me is I can take all that background and that allows me to be able to understand and click, if you will, with a lot of people that I talk to. Because I probably have been in their shoes at one point or the other. Oh, okay. Short right. of being a scientist and you know that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, that sounds good. No, so uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are listening to this that uh, have refinanced uh, their mortgage uh, or are thinking about it. You know, with the the way the economy is nowadays, nowadays, you know, and the rates and all that. But uh, yeah, many people on social media talking about the rates and what's happening with them. Of course, it's trending to talk about them. What is important to know about the rates and who should you be listening to in that regards? That's a great question. There's a lot of talk about the rates. You see it all over the TV, all over social media. Everybody's weighing in on the rates. And here's the important thing to, to know about the rates. The people on TV don't know your particular file. They don't know about your debt to income ratio, they don't know your income, they don't know your particular story. Um, so, and every, and then the rate is, everybody has a rate, everybody, like, like, like a fingerprint, everybody's rate is a little bit different. And the reason is because there are so many factors that go into your particular rate that there's no way that the guy on TV could know about your story. So some of the things that go into your, your rate would include your, your FICO score, your debt to income ratio, your loan to value. Um, there's, you know, even on the purchase side of things, maybe sometimes the seller will want to, you know, um, maybe you can buy some points uh, to, to lower your rate. All those things come into play. And so it is important that especially if you're looking to buy a house right now, you know, be in constant touch with your loan officer because they know what's going on. And there's going to be some movement in your file, of course, because of the way the rates are going. So be in contact with him as much as possible to know where you stand. Um, you don't want to get to the, the final 30 days and, and, and just go be blindsided by, you know, that kind of stuff. So you and your loan officer and your real estate agent should all be working together um, step in step. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. You know what? Underwriting. Can you tell people what, what is underwriting all about? And uh, yeah, what's the advantage of having a pre-approval with upfront underwriting as opposed to just a pre-approval? Underwriting is a really big deal. There's that, that's where the underwriter goes in and analyzes your file and makes sure that for whatever your program you're looking to get into, that you fit within those parameters. And they look at all the details. They look at your credit score, your income, all, and make sure everything fits in line. And they are the final say 
um, they say, you know, go or no go when it comes to the very end of things. Um, the advantage, now you should have a pre-approval at least before you go out and contact a realtor, start looking at houses. Um, they're going to want to see that before they take you looking at houses anyway. Um, and a pre-qualification is not something you want because it doesn't look at your credit score. It hasn't been looked at by an underwriter. So it's just a, um, a spit in the wind, if you will. So it's not as accurate as it could be. Now, if you get a pre-approval uh, pre with upfront underwriting, you know, an underwriter actually goes in and looks at your file from the very beginning and you make sure that this, there's nothing that's um, out of the norm or something that doesn't need to be addressed right away. Um, you know, like maybe there's some blemishes on your record or some other things that, that you're not maybe aware of. The underwriter will find them, I guarantee you. <laughs> oh. um, so that is something that you know you want to have because that leads you to being in a more a more uh, confident shopper, and it, it makes for a better, stronger file. And especially when there's like multiple offers on houses now, you can go in and go, "Hey, I'm pretty sure I can put in a strong offer because I've already had an underwriter look at this from the get go." Now. That's not the only time the underwriter will be looking at the file. They'll be looking at it a number of times as you go through the process, but they'll get familiar with what you have going on and they'll know your file. So um, if there's something in the background that needs to be fixed, that's the time that you need to get that addressed. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of people are, uh, you know, they have credit card debt and, uh, you know, they're worried about paying off that debt, especially mm -hmm. with, the market the way it is keep you know inflation's you know, out of control and you know gas prices continue to go up so can they refinance and actually pay off some of their credit card debt oh totally that is that is one of the number one reasons that people get a cash out refinance and i i did it myself just within the around christmas time um it all comes down to how you manage your cash flow in your house so let's say you've got four or five credit cards and they're running at 10, 12, 14%. That's a lot of consumer debt. And it just keeps, it's not going to get any better until you pay it off. And so by paying that off in one lump sum, you get rid of that card. And then that cash that you are spending on that card can now be used for something better. Maybe you go, you know, maybe you save $300 a month by paying off those couple of credit cards. Well, now that can go towards your house payment. And, you know, so it's going to make your monthly budget probably a lot more flexible. Um, maybe you don't have to eat hamburger every night. Maybe you can eat steak once in a while. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. You know, right now there, that's a really big opportunity for a lot of people in Phoenix, because now they're seeing that they've got um, a, a ton of equity in their house and maybe it makes sense to get that payment down. It's not so much a matter of the rate. Now, you you definitely you, you want to look at that, make sure it makes sense, but it really comes down to the dollars and cents. You know, if you can refinance and take, I don't know, I'm just going to throw a number, say 30 grand out, and you've got $15,000 worth of credit card debt, and you need to do some refinance or some repairs on your house, like a new air conditioner might cost you 10 grand, you know, all that. And then you look at what your monthly payment is going to be. You're like, oh, hey, that's I can do that. That monthly payment is already in my wheelhouse. I'm already making that amount. And now I've got all this breathing room in my head, my house. You know, I can do those things that I need to do to support my family. So, yeah, looking at that, looking at the math, not just the rate, is the way you want to look at that. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Now, Dave, so uh, I know there's, uh, you know, a lot of other mortgage companies out there. What makes you so unique? over the other loan officers in Phoenix? Well, I'm in Phoenix, I'm local, and you can find me. <laughs> so, you know, you, I can meet you for coffee. You get to see that I'm a real person. Um, but I am very responsive to emails, texts, phone calls. Uh, when you're my client, you are my number one uh, person. I wake up every morning going, okay, what do we need to do to make sure that, you know, Joe gets his loan done? And, you know, so that's, you know, your first thing in the morning is when I do make sure I do all my business, make sure, hey, we've got to get this done. So I try to do, um, when I meet them or I talk to them on the phone, um, 
I, I set their expectations. Here's what you can expect of me. Here's what I expect of you. I expect all your details, all your documents right up front so that there's no, no hesitation. Um, you know, nobody likes a, a surprise at closing. Um, so I'm, I'm, very, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, uh, I'm pretty stickler for getting all your documents in really quickly so that there's nothing hanging out there that we can't address. Um, you know, I'm a pretty likable guy, you know, I, and I'll tell you how it is. You know, I'm not going to, you know, feed any, uh, you know, blow any wind anywhere that doesn't need to be blown. Um, and I'll tell you where you're stand. You know, that's a good, I'll also tell your realtor, um, the one that you're working with, where we're at in the process too, because they're part of that team. We all need to know where you're going to be. So overall, yeah, I'm very, um, I'm very reachable and I'm very responsive to people's phone calls or their texts. You know, on that same note, what's the advantage of using a local mortgage broker instead of a nationally advertised mortgage provider? Um, using a local broker, they know what's going on in your city. Even, even more down to the point, using High Financial, the broker that I'm with, we have lower margins. So we are extremely competitive and can probably beat most offers that are out there in the Phoenix or even in the, uh, the Arizona area. Um, the other thing is that, you know, we don't have the, um, you take some of those big nationally advertising, you know, you see they're advertising everywhere. It's in on TV, it's on the radio, it's on uh, sports arenas, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, Business 101 says you take that marketing cost and pass it on to the consumer. Well, that means higher closing costs for using that guy that was online, you know. Uh, maybe he's on the East Coast and we're on the West Coast. You know, after four o'clock or two o'clock our time, he's at home having dinner and you can't reach him. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I've, I've talked to my clients at nine o'clock at night because they had a question. I have no problem taking a phone call because they're, so, they're worried about something. It's my job to make sure that they go to bed sleeping pretty good and not worry about what they have concern about. So, you know, I'm local, I, I, you know, and, and yeah, we can, you know, plus you keep the money local too. That's, that's very important. You know, I, I'm a big thing for small business and if you can keep the money in Phoenix or Arizona, um, that's a big deal to me. Oh so, yeah. No, where are you located by the way? I, I have our office. We have the, the satellite office in flat in, um, in North Scottsdale, but oh, I actually work out of my house. And we, I have three other agents that would, that we all work together. We all work out of our house, so we're we're able to up and go to meet somebody in, in a heartbeat. You know. So. Yeah, that's a that's another question. Is uh, you know, with COVID still around? You know, uh, I don't know. Some people are still a little nervous about meeting in person. Can this be handled over the phone or on Zoom? My, my yeah, totally. We, if you want, we can do the entire thing touch free. Um, when you go in and, and fill out your application on our portal, you have the, you can do it all electronically. You can actually, from there, you can upload your bank statements. You can upload your W-2s and your pay stubs all right from there. So if you wanted to do the entire process and never see me personally, uh -huh. that's perfectly okay. And we can make, make that happen. So Boy, that's you know, email and texting and, and phone calls. They work really well for them. So that's that's a really big advantage that we have over a lot of folks. Oh, okay. David, also, uh, yeah, I'm just uh, curious. Yeah. I mean, if someone's not sure if they qualify, you know, should they still go through the process to find Definitely. Out? Yeah, they should. Um, I'm, I'm talking to a guy right now, and he's in a little bit of a sticky situation, and he's hesitant to pull the trigger because he doesn't know where he stands as far as that goes. There's a lot of things that are going on in his family life that might have a factor and go ahead and go through the process. It, it's, it's not binding. It doesn't cost you anything, but it allows us and an underwriter to get a really good look at what you've got going on and say, Hey, there's some things in your file that you need to clean up. You're not quite a candidate just yet, but here's what you need to work on. And then that buyer, they have a really good idea. They're no longer guessing at what they need to fix. They know because their owners have told them what they need to fix. You need to fix your credit score. You need to pay off debt. You need to 
be in your job for more than a couple of months now or whatever the case may be. Now you have to, now you have, you know, hey, I can go and fix these things. And then when I'm ready, maybe six months later, I can come back because maybe I'll have gotten, maybe I've gathered a bunch of cash to, to use for a down payment or all those kind of things. So um, yeah, I would say definitely go through it. Um, it doesn't, like I said, it's it, it doesn't cost you anything and it's non-binding. Yeah, that's what I was going to bring yeah. up, cost. You know, like I know, uh, yeah, when people are looking to refinance, a lot of times they don't have a lot of extra money to to spend on this and that. What does it cost someone or can they roll that cost of refinancing into a loan so they don't yeah. have to come up with anything up front? Yeah. Sometimes they may have to come up with maybe an appraisal fee up front, but it is extremely common on a refinance to just roll those closing costs right into the loan so that when you go to closing and the title agent gives you a check, it's your check. Whatever the amount is on that check, that's yours to go and they don't have to do anything else with that. So that's very common to just roll that into uh, and pay your closing costs right at the closing table. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, David, yeah, any final comments you want to make before we end? <laughs> no, I've had a great time talking with you. Um, I hope that uh, everybody out there, you know, will give us a chance to uh, come out and talk to them. You know, if you've, if you've got questions about your mortgage, you know, maybe you, you went with someone else and you're not quite to the process yet and you want to do a comparison, you know, let, let's talk. I'll be happy to run your file and see. Yeah, what's the best way that someone should get in touch with you? Um, the best way is either call me directly and my numbers should be up on the screen um, or you can, you know, find my, my website, uh, email. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll talk to you any way you can. It's an email, phone call. If you want to meet for coffee um, to get a good feel. <laughs> that number, for you that number right there is the one. Yes. And I think oh, okay. I've got it up here. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I would definitely love to hear from everybody. If you have questions. You know, don't be afraid to ask because we, we, we're here to tell you what's going on. Um, yeah, especially when it comes to rates and all that kind of stuff. That guy on the news, he doesn't know your file, but mm -hmm. your loan officer will. And he can give you a lot more expert, accurate advice. And therefore, you don't have to worry about what's going to happen. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on here. It's great to meet you. Uh, thanks, Brian. I appreciate you being with me here. I had a lot of fun today. Oh, thanks. Thanks.